So, you know, I'm sure you're like, I'm waiting for him to bring this up because everyone brings this up. And it's the ultimate, I mean, you work with Metallica and years later, I read on this site called Blabbermouth that there was a huge issue of the bass guitars being really low in Injustice for All, which is one of the first album that really broke Metallica. And there was this blame game going around. First, you know, but anyway, Jason Newstead said it grieved him. It almost like he was about to have a nervous breakdown. So what I gather is the band wanted it low or Lars wanted it low. Then he said, no, Steve, you wanted it low. What happened? In a nutshell, in a nutshell, what happened? Well, I mean, first of all, you have to understand, I came up with dance music, so I always felt that groove is important. So obviously bass and drums would be a big part of, you know, what I would do. And when we got the call to do Metallica, I found out the reason why they hired us because of the work we did with Madonna. Who would figure, right? So uh, we do the, the project up in Bearsville, New York. We worked on an SSL at Bearsville Studios. And Lars Richard came in with the whole EQ setup chart how he wanted his drums to sound. So I had Michael Barbiero, my partner, says, Michael, why don't you work with Lars and get the drums where he wants them? And then once you do that, I'll take care of you know, the rest. So he does that. And I listened to the sounds. I said, are you kidding me? I think this sounds like ass. So anyway, I kind of re-EQ'd all the drums a little bit just to make them a little more palpable. Again, it's near the beholder. Then I brought the bass up, which I thought the bass was a great part because you know what's great about his bass? It was a great marriage of Hetfield's rhythm guitars. It was like they needed to work together, you know? It was perfectly played. So I got the whole rhythm section together, vocals and everything like that. And then I, I felt, okay, now it's time, you know, Hetfield was in there, thumbs up and everything like that. Then I brought Lars in. And first of all, Lars hears it for about Five to ten minutes, five to ten seconds. He goes, all right, stop right there. So he goes, what happened to my drum sound? And I basically probably said something like, you were serious? <laughs> so <laughs> I had to rearrange the, the drum sound to get it where he wanted again. So I goes, okay, see the bass? I go, yeah. Drop it down the mix. I said, why? It's great. Drop it down the mix. Okay, so I, I did it as a joke. Dropped it all the way down. I said, all right, he goes, drop it down another five or six dB. From there, which you could hardly hear. You couldn't hear it. I said, seriously? And I, I think I turned around to Hetfield, and he just went like this. And then I, I remember having a conversation with Cliff Bernstein and Peter Mensch, who were managing them. And I basically had a conversation. Listen, I love these guys. I think this band is fucking amazing. Okay? I don't agree with what they want me to do with this. And again, I understand it's their record. They should get whatever they want. We're hired to get them what they want. But I just can't see doing this. Uh, and, and we wound up giving them what they want. You know, again, it's not my record. It's their record. You have to respect their opinion. I hated it personally because, again, I'm a bass guy. Okay. I love bass. You know, bass can't, even when we record it, we record the fattest basses in the world. Uh, but, and, but, here, but here's uh, the thing: it was a blame. It was a blame game. But here is the thing: I mean, the band. That's a true story. I don't give a fuck who says anything. Right. I was there and knew what happened. Right. But here's the thing: the band had had to have had the record for at least some time and listened to it over and over again. So they ultimately were like, "Hey, this sounds good." They, they liked it. Yeah, they liked it. You know, the whole thing is. I think at that time they were looking for a more garagier sound, a little more raw sound. And and my goal was actually to take Master of Puppets and make that sound like a demo at the end of the day. That was my goal. You know, I love Ride the Lightning and Master of Puppets. Great albums, you know. But anyway, so all the stories came out. And again, the end of the day, it says mixed by Steve Thompson and Mike Barbiero. So obviously we're going to get the shit because it's our fault. Well, but, but, here, but here is the thing about that whole episode, because we've all been in a situation where something doesn't go according to plan. 
And everyone starts blaming the fingers or pointing the fingers. Right. But here is the thing where I believe your story is the most believable because a couple of years later, the band released an album called Saint Anger. Ooh. <gasps> exactly. Oof. And you're like, wow. First of all, how as a band do you listen to this? Just you sit with this record for a month. Because right, most of the time the album is mixed, the album gets it's, mixed. It's Saint Anger. Is that the one with Bob Rock and they did exactly, a video? Exactly, exactly. Right. Oof. Right. Well, then, that, that was uncomfortable to watch. Well, but but how do you sit? Like how how do you sit? As a, as a as a four piece in the room along with a producer, and be like, wow, this album sounds incredible. I don't understand how that happens, but here is the thing: that album, I think, ultimately destroyed Bob Rock's career. I mean, I, I haven't really. I mean, everything prior to that album in the rock world, and I know some pop artists. It was Bob Rock, Bob Rock, Bob Rock, Bob Rock. But after that album. He kind of disappeared. I mean, maybe rock was, but do you understand what I'm saying? Like, would you, well, agree you know, that that album? I, first of all, I prided myself in most of my career to stay away from the video camera because at the end of the day, it's not about me, it's about the artist. Right. So when I saw Bob Rock in that video playing bass or this and that, I felt uncomfortable. Yeah. It should be about the band. You know, you know obviously, you know, we're in a, when I'm in the studio, you know, I'll do arrangements uh, uh, if I have to rewrite lyrics with the band, parts, or whatever. You know, I was the world's worst guitar player, so don't ever expect me to put a guitar on a track. You know, but I, you know, I, I did a little of that. But, you know, to each his own. But I felt really uncomfortable looking at, at, at that, the making of Same Anger. And obviously, Hetfield was going through his, um, and I love James. I think James is a great guy. And it was, I was sad to see that he had some problems, you know. Uh, Lars has always been the stronghold of the band. Uh, I didn't really, you know, Kurt, first time I met him was uh, when Metallica flew me and when they got elected to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And I'm hanging out with Jimmy Page and I introduced myself as Kurt, I am so sorry. I just want to give you the real story, what happened. And again, uh, I love bass and I thought your parts were outstanding and it just, it upset me, but I had no control. and. I, I really take a lot of pride in what I do, but at the end of the day, you have to say, this is what the band won, this is what you have to give them. I mean, I can fight all I want, but at the end of the day, I got to go with them, not me. Right. Unless it was my record, and that's what happened. And Fleming Ramson, the guy who produced the record, had issues. I met him for the first time, and I loved his work, ever. I had to explain to him, I said, you probably heard from 50 other million people, this is what really happened. And again, I, I have no, I, I love that band. I love the guys and everything like that. I mean, they, to me, just blew me away when they come out. And it, it was sad. I mean, my biggest regret, we were doing so many projects. What I would have loved to have done, give them the mix they wanted and then mix everything the way I heard, just to have a copy. I, I didn't, we were doing three projects at once. We couldn't do that. You know, understand when we were mixing that album, they were on the Monsters of Rock tour. And they would fly in a helicopter maybe once or twice a week, you know, to go over everything. So, and the only guys that came to the studio were Lars and James. The other guys were probably at the gigs and everything like that. But it was sad. I mean, you know, it is what it is. You know, it's interesting. You know, I, I, I look at a lot of critics and they go, they love it without, a lot of people like it without the bass. And, and, and there's obviously people who don't, you know, personally, I'd rather have the bass in there because again, it was a great glue to the drums and guitars. And it was that glue piece that worked great. Well, interesting is that's a, that's a, it's a really interesting point you bring up. Like some people like it without the bass. I yeah. Mean, when I, said, don't touch it. When I, when I was in high school, I mean, I remember buying that album and I actually liked it without the bass because as someone in high school, you're not thinking about, oh, I don't hear the bass. You're just as as a as a you know a sixteen just listen to the songs and what they are and what right, they right right that that's yeah. it so to to a sixteen year old uh, to a sixteen year old 
that's not listening to the nuances. What I liked about it is it sounded different. It was unique. So if anything, I actually never had a problem with it and I never thought about it until it was brought up, if that makes any sense. It makes total sense. You know, uh, again, music is subjective. Right. Sonics are subjective. Songs are subjective. It's really to the ear of the beholder what they feel about a song. <clears throat> and a lot of times, unless you're a musician, you're not going to pay attention to stuff like that. You're just going to see what the song, the whole song does to you. You're not going to dissect all the hi-hats here and this weird nerd. Like, 